Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Hello and welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about direct mail, so snail mail. What's going on with snail mail? Everybody talks about the internet. Nobody opens you know, direct mails anymore, and that's totally untrue. One really good example of this is when I look at uh, Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels, they actually send personalized um, you know, mail directly to you, and it's handwritten. And think about this. When you're getting some, something that's handwritten to you uh, directly, you know, what are the odds that you're going to open it? If it doesn't look like it's you know, an advertisement or it doesn't look like it's junk mail out there, you're probably going to open it, right? Especially if it's like Federal Express, you're going to open it. So I know there's a lot of different case studies out there, but I think the, the first thing we want to dispel is that direct mail is not dead. And in fact, it, it, it's, it's, making a, it's doing pretty well because not a lot of people are doing it right now because people are trying all the new uh, bells and whistles on the internet. But, um, you know, especially on the, it depends on the niche that you're in too. Let's say, let's say you're in a niche that caters more to, uh, older people. Well, in that case, they're more susceptible to opening, uh, to opening mail. So Neil, what are your thoughts around direct mail in general? Yeah. The the way I like looking at direct mail is as long as the U S government keeps sending mail and all the other governments keep sending mail, people are still going to open them up, right? It's that simple. The reason most people don't think direct mail converts is they're not that creative. Sending something that just looks normal won't do because like people know what's junk and they just throw it away. But I had something that uh, the other day that came in my mail and it was not blacked out, but it was like an envelope that was saying like uh, it's a criminal offense uh, if someone else opens this mail or something like that. I thought it was from the U.S. government. So I opened it up. Right. And because of that, I looked at it. I'm like, oh, this is a sales pitch. But I ended up reading it nonetheless. And I thought that was really smart because just like a normal web funnel, you also have a direct mail funnel. How many addresses do you have out of those addresses? How many mails are you going to end up sending out of those mails? How many people open it out of the people who open it? How many read and how many out of the people who read? How many take action like buy, call, etc. Right. So when you map out your funnel, it's how can you improve each step? So how can you only send it to the relevant audience? How can you get them to read? So one way to get them to read is sending a unique message envelope like, hey, this is a criminal offense for someone else to open it or whatever it may be. Make it look more like important mail versus like a spammy advertisement. Then with your copy, make sure it's persuasive. And then, of course, try to get someone to call, right? Have the right call to actions in there. But it's also being really creative. Frank Kern was mentioning something to me, and I still had to test this out in which everyone has ideal customers. So for me, I pitch like big contracts, like I'll pitch stuff that's like a million bucks and it's all or nothing, right? You either get these big engagements or you don't. So I'm gonna test something where I send someone a package with a a carrier and it's like a few thousand bucks, literally in cash. They keep the cash as long as they take a phone call, 30 minutes. They don't have to do anything, they keep the few thousand bucks. I bet you I can get someone on the phone and close enough people by sending out like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, right? That's snail mail. It's a really creative strategy, and I'll be pitching investors or private equity people or whoever it may be or big companies like, hey, give me a million-dollar contract. I'm so confident. I'm willing to give you 5000 bucks for this 30-minute call. It's such a drastic pitch. Everyone's like, wait, you're willing to give me $5,000 to hear you out for 30 minutes? You must have something that's important for me to listen to. Wow. Well, let me know how that goes. That'd be a great case study. But um, I, I think the other thing with direct mail is you have to consider your, your audience too. So I mean, if you look at pure statistics, looking at numbers here, 41% of people aged over 65 years do not use the internet at all. So if you're pitching people in, in that range, you know, perhaps it's better to use, to use mail. And I'm also looking at other numbers here saying that um, you can sometimes with direct mail, um, if you you know complement it with a digital strategy, your conversion rate can be over forty percent versus email outperforms email by sixteen percent. So you get a conversion rate of over forty percent, and it outperforms email. That is saying a lot. So you have to think about how you can combine that strategy, which is what um, Russell Brunson does with, um, with with some of his mail. And I, I think in some cases too, I've heard of uh, people driving leads. I think uh, you know for direct mail, you're probably paying a few bucks. 
um, but they're driving leads at scale, especially if you're targeting local businesses or people in a, in a very specific area. Let's say you're targeting rich people um, in Beverly Hills or something like that. So think about how you can use direct mail to complement your strategy. Um, Neil has something going on, I think, um, you know, for us, we have a plan to, you know, give out very specific gifts to, to certain people and we're going to be sending them, you know, mail directly. Um, and also in some cases, we're going to be sending out FedExes. Every single person opens a FedEx. Um, I'm pretty sure the open rate's high. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but, um, you know, that's something to take into consideration as well. Neil? Yeah, the other thing is be really creative with the messaging that you put within the mail. So, for example, Los Silva, and there was another guy from San Diego, I forgot his name, they created a mastermind. They sent me a mail, and that mail was a letter I opened it, or like a small little mini package, right? Because it was a screen, like a video screen within that mail. So, like I opened it, think of like a postcard, but you open it up, and a video automatically starts playing, and it is them pitching me on why I should be doing something with them. I thought it was the coolest mail I ever got, and I watched it around three or four times, and then it died. Luckily, they gave me a USB cord to power it up again, so I powered it up again, and I'm like, this is amazing, and their conversion rates to get someone to sign up for a five-figure mastermind was really high from it. So get really creative with the type of mails that you're sending. It's not the, the key is not to go send out a million mails like direct mails to people right just like internet it works the same way you're better off sending really tailored targeted messages mail and copy to people who are your ideal buyers versus just blasting out everyone right everyone likes personal stuff right yeah and it just converts better too and if you target down your list of who you're direct mailing right through snail mail to a small group you can then spend more money creating a personalized, customized, cool message versus when you send something out to a million people, you got to pay to send it out to a million people, which means that the quality of what you're sending can't be that high due to the fact that you have to pay uh, a large sum of money to send it out to a ton of people that may not be your ideal customer, so it's not going to convert as well. All right. Awesome. That's it for this episode of Marketing School. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.